All right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI. Good to have you back. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we're into part five, working with assistants, uh, creating and managing messages as we march forward and learn about all the component pieces of assistance. So let's jump into it. Uh, always please, oh, whoop, sorry, I was about to say the like, comment, and subscribe, but we, I forgot our quote. Our quote of the day is, I want to keep my clients happy, and the pressure's on me as the boss to manage my three assistants and make sure that everything is getting done. There's less time for tears and more time for bossing people around by Brad Gorski. Okay, very cool. All right, here we go. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you would, please. Anything you do beyond just viewing the video helps the algorithm and helps other people take advantage of this content as well. So if you like the content, we'd really appreciate uh, hitting that like button, that subscribe button, or better yet, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you really, really like the content, <clears throat> think about becoming a member. We have two levels, Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. Get the loyalty badges, get some emojis, get the discounted merchandise. Uh, not a lot of merch right now, but we're going to keep building that up as we go. Uh, and then Artificial General Intelligence, level two, everything from level one, priority reply to comments, which is not a big deal because right now I reply to every comment, but... Uh, members only polls, yes. Members shout outs, photos and status updates of my dogs, and early access to new videos. And that last reason is usually why people want to join, because I queue my stuff up way in advance. So uh, if you like binge watching my stuff, and you want to see it as soon as I make it, go nuts. <clears throat> All right, so let's jump into this. First things first, let's do a review of creating assistance and threads to make sure that we have the pieces before we get to creating messages. So let's make some objects. First, creating an assistant review. Recall that to create an assistant, we just need to import our package, uh, create a client, and then to create an assistant, it's really just client.beta.assistance.create. Pass in some arguments into the constructor here. Model GPD-4 Turbo in my case, you're a helpful assistant. I'm gonna call this one message holder. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna set some metadata too. And you're gonna see me do more of that. I wanna set more metadata as I go along and you should too, um, because you're gonna, there's things you're gonna wanna remember to keep track of. So I wanna keep reminding you that metadata is a key component of that uh, when we're messing with uh, the assistants and the threads and the messages. So holds messages true, likes messages true. I just made these up. Temperature one, top P one, not really messing around with temperature or top P. If you are new to the series and you are interested in doing a deep dive on temperature and top P, you need to go back to chat completions where we do an extremely deep dive on all of that. So um, do that if you want, um, now or later. I would suggest doing it before you come here because it'll really help you just overall, but it's your call. You may be in a rush to learn about assistance, so you know if you wanna just kinda keep cranking through these, go nuts too. All right, so let's see that in actual code, though. <clears throat> so here, creating and managing messages. Uh, just to review, an assistant represents an entity that can be configured to respond to a user's messages using several parameters like model, instructions, and tools. That's what we saw just now. So here's an assistant. We're going to create an assistant real quick and validate it. We've already gone through the code, so I'm just going to run this code. And there's our assistant. Now, I do a dump of the whole assistant information, and then I show you calling out specific pieces of uh, the assistant information so that you have kind of both sides of the equation and you can parse out that information as you see fit. Now let's go back, a thread. A thread represents a conversation between a user and one or many assistants. You can create a thread when a user or your AI application starts a conversation with your assistant. So that's when threads get started, right? So you notice how they bind that to the user. That's right, that's how we bind them. A thread is a single user conversation to one or more assistants. And uh, let's, let's take a look at that in slides real quick. I wanna walk you through the code before we actually run it. I find that walking through the code in the slides I think is gonna be better. So here we're gonna create a thread, pretty straightforward thread. We're gonna say uh, import our package, create our client, now we can reuse the same client over and over again. I really don't need these first two. I just can include them for completeness in case you wanna run them in isolation. Um, thread holding message, client beta threads create. And then I create some metadata. The most important metadata you're gonna create per thread 
which is the user that this thread belongs to. So you're going to want to start storing that uh, all the time. Now, when we, later on, when we get into creating real-world type assistance, you're going to see techniques we can use to obfuscate like the username so it doesn't actually get out in case somebody gets a hold of this information. Uh, but for now, we'll just say user ABC123. And then we'll dump out the, um, the thread information. So let's go ahead and do that in code real quick. And again, these are just reviews. These should not be new information to you. Um, da, 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 da. Here we go, creating assistant and thread. So we've got the assistant. Here's our thread. Same, same code you just saw. We're just cranking an empty thread at this point. And there it is. Boom. Real easy. So we've got our thread. And notice I didn't really bother calling out parts of the thread. It's so small, you can just kind of look through it there. All right, so now let's uh, talk about messages. Well, before we talk about messages, let's uh, get into the concept of them again. So, understanding messages. So what's going on with messages? Once again, here we are. We see the architecture presented by OpenAI. You've got your assistant. And then independent of that, you have a thread. Within a thread, you can have one or more messages. And a thread is bound to a user session, right, typically. And so here we have one or more uh, questions. Here as a user message, how much should I contribute to my retirement plan? It goes off and does something called a run, which will be coming up after this uh, session that we're doing on, on messages. And then the run runs it and then gets you an answer back. And, that, and then you get an assistant message. So all the messages are stored in the thread, whether they're generated by you, the user, um, uh, or the assistant. They're all stored in the thread. It's an ongoing record of what's going on. This isn't new information, right? This is what you see in ChatGPT all the time. When, when we look at the history of our conversations, those are just threads. That's, that's all it's doing. It's tracking, showing you the contents of the thread that you were doing at that time. And each conversation is a different thread by, by that definition. All right, so as far as where you are, you are here at the message. A message created by an assistant or a user. Messages can include text, images, and other files. Messages stored are stored as a list on the thread. So it's a list of messages on the thread. So you'll manage them like a list, as we'll see in a minute. Now let's get into the definition here, a deeper definition. The contents of the messages your users or applications create are added as message objects to the thread. Messages can contain both text and files, well, and images, although it doesn't say images. There's no limit to the number of messages you can add to threads. I need to change that because that's not exactly correct. Can, can contain uh, text, images, uh, and files, or I guess image URLs maybe. There we go, and files. Um, uh, there is no limit to the number of messages you can add to threads. We smartly truncate any context that does not fit into the model's context window. Uh-oh. We smartly truncate any context <clears throat> that does not fit into the model's context window. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Um, so what does that portend? Well, let's find out because that's where things can get kind of funky. Uh, real quick, though, before we do that, <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> so here um, you can see we've got our thread. We've got our messages. And remember, threads are independent of assistance. Threads don't care about assistance. And assistants really don't care about threads. Um, they're independent of each other. The thing that connects them are, are the runs that we do when we're running our messages. And so here we have thread one, message one, uh, message two, message three. And then we can have runs. Message one can run on assistant one, message two on assistant two, message three on assistant three. And that's how we go. So <clears throat> we've already done assistance. We've already done threads. Now we're doing messages on the thread. And then everything will culminate in finally doing runs to have that interaction with the assistants, one or more assistants. Now let's talk about the context window. <clears throat> the context window is super important if you're not being careful. Now context windows are getting large enough that you don't, for typical conversations, it's not a big deal, but it can be a big deal if you're dealing with large amounts of information. 
Um, and I'm not talking about files because there's plenty of room for files and that sort of thing. I'm talking about actual conversation dumps into or sent to the LLM directly. So depending on how much text is being dumped into the LLM, you've got to keep in mind that there is a window. Uh, we call it the context window uh, of token space that it will maintain. And anything beyond that window, it will in fact forget about it. It literally forgets about it. It has no knowledge of it if it's not within the context window. That's why we employ things like embeddings and other stuff to feed in data to um, and search through data and do all that because we, we can't realistically fit everything into the context window. Now that's actually changing. Some of these context windows are getting big. In fact, I just heard an announcement. Um, I believe it was a two or four million context window. I'm going to do a news article about it. So these context windows are getting huge. And it may be that we could just shove everything into a context window, but today that is not the case. And so what happens is it uses a uh, FIFO, first in, first out. So newer stuff gets retained. Older stuff, if it's old enough or it's big enough, it gets not really old enough. Age doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just size. Uh, as you fill this thing up, the older stuff gets pushed out and gets essentially forgotten in the context window. Now, of course, that's going to beg the question, how big is the context window? Well, it depends. If you're using GPT-4 Turbo, the context window is 128,000 tokens. And that's a good thing. And look at the training data. The training data is good up to December 2023. So that's a win-win all the way around. If, however, you're using the cheaper uh, and faster, but not as accurate, GPT-35 Turbo model, and I'm using, I'm talking about the latest one right now as of the time of this recording, 0125, then it uses, or it has, a 16,385 token, 16,000 tokens essentially, and its cutoff date is September 2021. So you have to decide, based on the model, be aware that token size, or sorry, the context window size is going to come into play here. You're not going to be able to shove nearly as much information into the context window of 3.5 that you are 4. Uh, but you save money, 3.5 is generally faster, and on and on and it goes. So you have to make those trade-offs, right? So again, just to kind of remind you, and if you haven't done it, I really recommend you go back to uh, chat completion models and do that. But just to remind you, you don't always have to use the GPT-4 Turbo model. If you're doing simple stuff like asking, you know, like I always do in my videos, what is a penguin? You don't need a four model to answer that. 3.5 can do it just fine. A 3.5 is fine for that. I mean, that's just basic general knowledge. So you may consider kicking down to a, a you know, faster, cheaper, way cheaper model, answer some of those basic questions, and then kicking up to four for the more complex questions to, to save money. Um, that's up to you. All right, moving on. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about the message object. Message object comes with a lot of stuff. And uh, here's a, a list of some of the things, and we're going to go through them iteratively. Uh, a little bit. We won't go through everything, of course, but I want you to know these things are here. So uh, ID, of course, everything has to have an ID. Uh, object type, which is always thread.message. Notice how we make the connection, right? Messages are very clearly children of threads. Uh, the created at, the timestamp, you've seen that before. Thread ID, the thread ID that the message belongs to. You have to have that. It's got to know what thread it's associated with. Messages cannot be independent of threads. Status of the message, which can be either in progress, incomplete, or completed. So yes, you can actually get status of messages. Uh, incomplete details. On an incomplete message, details about why the message was incomplete. So yes, you will have scenarios where messages are not completed. This will give you details on why it wasn't complete. Completed at, timestamp it finished. Incompleted at, timestamp it was unable to finish. So there's a number of uh, number of things that you can get out of the message object. Continuing on, um, some other things you can get are the role. Now the role only comes in two flavors. There's either user, 
role or assistant role. Either the user's typing in stuff in the user role or the assistant's answering stuff in the assistant role. And yes, you can create assistant role messages rather than the LLM. You can do that. Later on, when we get into real world stuff, I'll give you some reasons why you might want to do that. Um, but it, it can happen and it does happen. Uh, content, the content of the message in an array of text or images. Watch out for that. Watch what it says there, an array of text or images. Be aware of that. <clears throat> assistant ID, if applicable, the ID of the assistant that authored this message. Yeah, that's your call if you want to bind it like that. Um, depends on, uh, well, it depends on whether or not assistant created the message or not, right? Because now we're talking about assistant messages. And, and when we get to that part, when we get into runs, yeah, that'll be important. You'll want to know what assistant gave you those answers to the message so that you know if you need to go back to that assistant and get more information. You can't. Attachments, a list of files attached to the message, and the tools they were added to, right? Were they code interpreter or were they, um, you know, for vision or what's going on there? Or rather file search. I should say for tools, there's really only code interpreter and file search. But there is a vision component there too. Uh, metadata, set of 16 key value pairs. We've used metadata out the wazoo at this point. You should be very familiar with metadata uh, and should be using it. All right, so let's take a look at creating a message. Uh, and um, we're going to start with, obviously, you know, the creation process and looking at the required field. So the required elements that we need are thread ID, we need to know what thread it's associated with. Role is required. You got to know where is the message coming from. Is it a user message or is it an assistant answering? Uh, content required. And then everything else is optional. Attachments, metadata uh, are optional. So let's go ahead and, and do a demo of that real quick, creating our first message. And real fast, here's what it's going to look like. We're just going to have a variable message. Set it equal to our client, beta threads message, create, and then pass in uh, our thread ID. Now I'm doing something different that I haven't done before because now we're getting more mature with uh, working with assistants and it's time to start coding them the right way. Um, in the past, what I do is just put the, you know, when I wanted a thread ID or something, I just put a thread ID in quotes and that was fine. That's not gonna fly anymore because now we have an assistant, now we have a thread, it's, and we're creating messages and the messages needs to know the thread. So I'm gonna be using the thread we created earlier, um, that thread's ID in our code, which is the way you should be doing it. So I'm not gonna be copying and pasting uh, IDs anymore. I'm gonna be actually using the ID of the thread that we created earlier and putting messages in there. A role, user in this case, content, what is a penguin? Again, it's, this is an array, but I can just pass in a simple string if I want to for simple stuff. And then metadata, I just put key and value. I should probably put user and user ID. I think I'll change that when we get to the code. All right, so let's go ahead then and uh, jump into our code. And here we go, creating messages. To create a message, we need to determine which thread to add the message to, the role for the message, the actual message itself. Here's a simple message with some metadata. And I I commented, well, I didn't, ChatGPT. I had ChatGPT comment the crud out of this just to make it you know, better as you're going through it so you understand what's going on. Might have gone a little overboard, but you get the idea. Now I am gonna change this metadata because what you really wanna do is store the user um, and their ID. I think we said ABC123. And uh, yeah, we'll do that route. Yeah, ABC123, all right, perfect. Notice I went back to the thread to see so I'll hang on to that. Do I really need to store the user? Nah, it's with the, it's with the um, thread. So honestly, six of one half a dozen together. Actually, you know what? That is overkill. Never mind. I'm gonna change it back. Any key value you want. All right, let's go ahead then and run this, and away we go. So we run it. It creates a new message. I dump the message. You can see the message has quite a bit going on here. Um, we've got the uh, message ID, which begins with MSG underscore. We've got an assistant ID, if applicable, in this case, no. Any attachments, it would enumerate, no. Completed at, uh, none, it hasn't been run yet. Content, and here's the content. Any annotations, no. 
uh, value, what is a penguin, type, text, created at, incomplete at, none because it hasn't run, incomplete details, none, uh, metadata, key value, object, thread, message, role user, run ID, none because it hasn't run, status, none because again, hasn't run, and thread that it's associated with, thread ID. So there it all is. And of course, if you want to, you can break it down individually as well. Here I do the message ID, the content, and then to show you how to yank out the value of the content, I, I grab that too, right? So it's an array. We said content was an array, so I say content zero, text value, and then message role. So come on down. You see here, I get the ID, I get the content, and then I say, no, 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 what I really wanted was what was in there, the text. So I say content text zero, right? Content text, and then I grab that uh, value. All right. <clears throat> pretty easy stuff you'll definitely want to play with this because now we're getting you know pretty deep into the weeds as far as how this stuff works now let's continue on the next thing i want to do and so we're, we're actually moving a little more advanced now i want to dig into um images and uh how we work with that and how we add images because uh, uh, for the content you can actually add an array of content parts, and those content parts can be text, as we just showed, or images passed with an image URL or an image file. Yeah, an actual file. Image types are only supported in vision-compatible models. Now, be aware of that. Um, GPT, uh, sorry, GPT-4 Turbo is a vision-compatible model. That is to say, it does incorporate vision into it. Not all models are that way, uh, so be keenly aware of that. I do include a link to where you can find this, and you can look it up yourself, the vision-compatible models. All right, so let's jump into uh, showing how you would actually do image files and image URLs in addition to text in a message, because I felt like that would be important, particularly as we're about to get ready to do runs in the next session. So here we go, let me walk you through it. So we're gonna do both an image URL and an image file. To do the image file, we go back to what I taught you about files, and we actually create a file object. We say client files create, file open, and then we give it the path. And I, I am gonna give you an artifacts directory that has these files in it, so you can run this code yourself. And uh, I've got a puppy dog JPEG. It's gonna open it for binary read. And then you have to indicate the purpose. And the purpose in this case is for vision. So the purpose for the file is for vision. It's actually required. Now, that is setting up the file piece. Now, to actually create the message that uses vision, I created a new variable called message vision. And we say client beta threads messages create. Same thing you did before. We say thread ID, role user. And here's where the fun begins. Now we actually turn the content array into a full-fledged array because now we got to do open square bracket and then curly bracket, type text, and then text. What is the difference between these images? Close curly bracket, comma, open curly bracket. Now I do an image URL. I figured that'd be easier for you. So type image URL, and then we say, you know, comma, image URL, then we give it the URL to the image. There it is. Close curly bracket. And it looks like I got a little extra something there. I'm not sure what that is. I may have to fix that. It looks like a typo. Maybe a typo. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Um, and then uh, open curly bracket, type image file. And then the, the actual image file where you pass in a file ID. Uh, and then you're good to go. Yeah, I think there's a typo in that one. Let's double check our code here. Let's see. Yeah, this one's this one's correct. Yeah, there was a typo in that other one. Sorry about that. That's all right. The code is correct, though. It will run. I've tested it many times. So, all right. So we create a file if we're going to pass in an image file. Otherwise, if we just want to pass in an image URL, we just do image URL. And then, of course, you, you want some text to go along with it. Typically, you're not usually just going to pass in an image, although you can. You're not required to pass in text. You can either pass in text, image URL, or image file. You're not required to do multiples. In this case, I did want to do multiples to show you how to do multiples, though. So we've got all three. We're going to go ahead and run this. 
And when we run it, it, we go ahead and just dump it out in a print statement and you can see, yep, it's all there. So we get the message ID for this message. We get uh, all the information you saw before and you can see it has image URL. It's got image file information. It's got the file ID of the file and all kinds of good stuff in there. So there we go. Okay, um, I think we're in good shape on that one now. Uh, I don't think there's anything we're missing here. Mm, no, all right, we're good. Okay, moving on. So now let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, now we've created a simple thread. We did a thread that we anticipated using vision on. And now I wanna talk about doing attachments. Now, a uh, list of files that are attached to a message and the tools they should be added to. So uh, when you're gonna do attachments for the tools, remember there's only two choices for tools, either code interpreter or file search. Vision doesn't count as a tool. Vision is just vision. So uh, it automatically knows when it gets an image to kick vision in, it doesn't count. The only two tools you have are code interpreter and file search. And in order for them to succeed, you need to have a file uh, well, actually, Code Interpreter doesn't need a file, but File Search does. So usually in order for them to succeed, you need a file of some kind, unless you're doing Code Interpreter and you're just having it crank code. All right, so uh, I went ahead and did one with Code Interpreter, and one of the ones that you guys have seen me do a million times before. So <coughs> I decided I'd give Code Interpreter a CSV file. It's a common delimited file with some data. Let me show you that real quick. <coughs> it's the penguins data here. It's just got a bunch of data about penguins. It's got their species, their island, their Coleman, uh, their length, their Coleman depth, flipper length and depth and body mass and sex and all that good stuff. So just data about penguins. And uh, what I decided to do then is we're gonna feed that in. I'm gonna say create three visualizations based on the data in this file. And then unlike where we created an array of image URLs and files, for vision, here it's a whole other attribute, attachments. And then we do an array of files that go in the attachment. And so I point to the file, I call it data file, and I say client files create, point to our penguin. Purpose, notice the purpose this time is assistance, assistance. So there's really only three purposes, right? Um, there's either um, uh, image, or sorry, vision, assistance, or completions. That's it. Those are the only three you're, you're going to have right now. All right, let's see this in action. We'll go ahead and come on into our code. So messages for tool use. Uh, here I create the file, purpose assistance. Here I give it the information it needs, thread ID, role, content, and then attachments. And that's the kicker, right? So it knows what needs to be attached. And then I just dump it out so you can see it in action. So let's go ahead and run that. And there it is. So we are good to go. Now, I'm pretty sure it goes without saying, but maybe this would be a good time for me to remind you that you can download all this code, right? Link's in the description so you can download my code. Please don't type this stuff manually. I create this so you can play with it. However, we have hit the 30 minute mark, so I think I may go ahead and stop here. And I'm trying to keep them shorter. So I'm gonna stop here, and then what we'll do is we'll pick it back up at listing uh, messages. So we'll do part six on listing messages. All right, everybody, this is Zane. I'll see you next time.